Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. So what I want to do here is update the guide for making this kind of title. I don't know exactly the right graphic design words to explain them, but to me they're titles with a double texture. Because we have this plain type working with the cutout typography all in the same space and it makes for a nice effect, looks pretty good. So I figured out a good way to do these in Motion and I posted that with a captioned guide a couple of months ago, but since then I've found it even easier and faster ways to do them, so I wanted to update those steps for you. And I think once you know this method, then you'll be able to make titles like these examples really easily. Okay, so let's jump in and see how we do them. I'm just starting with some text ready for our first example. It's Avena, font size is 200, it's set to black, line spacing has the two words very close together, and everything's centered in the canvas. So the first thing we want to do is make the element to give us the cutout type. So I'll grab the line tool, and I'm going to grab shift and drag from right to left. I'll come into the properties and reset the X and Y, back into shape change the color to white, I'm going to increase the width, and turn off the caps, and I'll just drop the opacity so I can adjust it this way, and okay, now we're ready to animate. If you've seen the After Effects reproductions, you'll see that I usually keyframe, but let's do this with behaviors going to grab the last point offset and drag it down to zero and then add a ramp behavior. Set the end value at 100. And I'm going to bring the playhead to one second and offset the end so that it reaches 100% at one second. Okay, now I'll come back to the shape and select the first point offset and I'll add another ramp behavior. Set the end value to 100%. Um, I'm going to offset the start so that this behavior begins at one second when the first behavior finishes and offset the end so that it finishes at two seconds. I'll bring my play here to two seconds. You know, I use keyframing so often that I'm losing my touch with behaviors, but here we go. This is what we want. All right, so now I'm going to select this line and I'm going to give it an image mask and I'll use our title text as the source and then I'm going to set the blend mode to subtract. That's one half of it done. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this line and I'm going to call it follow going to leave everything but I'm going to get rid of the image mask. Now I'm going to grab our title and duplicate that. I'll move it up in the group to sit with follow. I'm going to tag it with the word follow so I can tell them apart. I'm going to turn this title on and I'm going to give this an image mask and use this follow element as the source and set that to subtract. So we've only got one more step to go. You see that uh, I don't want to see this until the first point offset is coming this way. So I'm going to bring the playhead to one second and this title text here I'm going to trim to one second. So
there you go. Very quick, very easy, and zero keyframing to get this dual texture titan effect. So let's have a look at a couple of other ways we can do them. For our second example, we will use the same elements and follow the same steps, and then you will see how we adjust things to create a different effect. So we have our titles again, and we have the line shape. I've named it lead, and it's going to stretch out again over 30 frames and cover up the main titles. Right now, I'm going to animate the first point offset. I'm going to bring my playhead to 10 frames. I'll grab the curve here from the last point offset and copy that. I'll select the first point offset and add a keyframe and then choose show in keyframe editor. And I'll select it and I'll use command V to paste the last point offset curve on and I'll bring this menu back to animated. Then I'm going to, well, uh, we'll pause here and have a look. What we have now is a flying banner that will move across. Uh, let's turn on example one just to compare them again. So in the first example, the last point offset stretches across 100% and then the first point offset moves in. But this time around, the first point offset is moving much sooner, so we get this flying banner effect instead. Okay, I'm going to adjust things even more. I'll bring my playhead to one second, and I'm going to grab that last keyframe point there for the first point offset and bring it back to finish at the same time as the last point offset, which will give us an enhanced uh, element. All right, let's follow the same steps as before. I'm grabbing the lead shape. I'm going to right click and add image mask and I'll drop the titles in as the source and set everything there to subtract. So we have our cutout type there. Then uh, following the same steps as example one, I'm going to duplicate this shape, rename it as follow, delete the image mask. Now I will duplicate the titles, tag it with the word follow to tell them apart. I'm going to turn those titles on and I'm going to add an image mask and use the follow shape that we just made as the source and set everything to subtract. So this is the result, which is pretty cool by itself. But we don't want to see this part of the title until later. Remember, uh, let's turn on example one to compare things again. In the beginning of the animation, we only have the cutout effect. So this is happening now because the first point offset is moving in much sooner. With example one, we just trimmed the titles to start at one second, so we just don't see them before the 30th frame. But we can't do that now with this one. So let's go back a step and see what the solution is. So I'm going to delete this shape and delete the image mask of those second titles. So now I'm, I'm going to make another copy of this shape. I'll delete the image mask. I'll rename it as follow. And I will reset the last point offset. So now only the first point offset moves, and now I'll rename it, I'll select those second titles, and I'll add an image mask, and I'll drop the new mask source in, and set everything to subtract. Now we get the effect that we were looking for. Okay, so let's have a look at how we have the line drop down from the top instead of moving from left to right. 
So for that example, let's start with the same titles. I'm going to select the group and grab the line tool and holding shift, I'll drag from top to bottom. I'll come to the properties and reset the X position. I'll come into shape. Actually, I'll just use the HUD first to change the color to white. Then I'll come into shape uh, to style and set the caps to none. And now I want to increase the width so that it covers all of the text. Okay, so I'll rename it as the lead shape and we are now set up to follow all the same steps as the first two examples. So if I bring the last point offset back to zero, I'll set a keyframe there, bring playhead forward by one second, bring the last point offset back up to 100, I'm going to grab the curve, break the tangents on these handles, and I'm going to bring this handle forward and this handle back this way. So what happens here is we get a nice slow beginning to the animation and then as it hits the steeper part of the curve it's going to leap forward a bit and then ease into its final place. Okay, so with the playhead at one second I'm going to grab this curve, copy it. I will select the first point offset. I'll set a keyframe and choose to show in keyframe editor. I'll select it in there and command V to paste the curve on and change this menu back to animated so I can see everything. All right, so now let's grab this lead shape. I'll right click and add image mask and I'll drop my titles in as the source and set everything to subtract. And from there we know what to do. I'm going to grab the lead shape and duplicate it. I'll delete the image mask, rename it as the follow shape. I'll grab our titles, duplicate them and tag them with the word follow. Turn them on and I'll give them the follow shape as the source for their image mask and the set the blend mode to subtract. There we go, all done. So those are the steps and I think um, with that method you're free to create a huge variety of titles which use that dual texture effect. I hope it's useful for you for your motion projects and your final cut projects and thanks for watching.